Hey, this is Mike Grody for the Sketchnote Podcast, and today we have Sasha Chua. But before we get started, I'd like to say that uh, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by my son Landon, who's very cute and two months old. Um, but now back to the back to the program. This is Sasha Chua. She lives in Toronto, Ontario, and she uses something interesting that I wanted to explore because this is something I've talked about before, and that is using a digital setup to do sketch notes. I do my sketch notes. Um, in analog form, I use a notebook and a pen, and, and I've played around with the iPad, but found it uh, still challenging, like I haven't figured out the right uh, stuff for me, like the way to do it right, because I've been focused on this book. But Sasha has a, an advanced system that she uses. She uses a, a tablet PC, and uh, I wanted to bring her on the podcast to talk a little bit about her setup and how she uses it and how it works for her. So welcome, Sasha. Thank you for coming. Of course. I'd be happy to help people learn more. Great. So um, why don't you start by explaining um, what the basic tools are that you use to do your digital setup, and then we can get into why you the benefits of those and maybe some of the some of the things that make it different than paper. So when a lot of people think about digital sketch noting, or actually when when people think about sketch noting, they think pen and paper, right. and when they think about digital sketch noting, they might think of a tablet like an iPad or an Android tablet. Mm -hmm. But if you start working with a tablet PC for digital sketch noting, and I'll show you that in a bit, you can take advantage of a lot more power applications that work together. You have the processing power, and there are all sorts of interesting tools and workflows that you can use. Cool. Very good. Well, um, why don't you tell us about the tools that you use um, specifically, and uh, the, the, the tablet PC and the styluses and software that you like to use for your setup? All right. I use a Lenovo X220 tablet PC in action. I'll actually zoom a little bit down to show oh, you cool. this. So this converts into a tablet Nice. by simply swiveling the screen. And then uh, you, you can either have it automatically rotate the screen for mm -hmm. you or you can rotate it into your preferred orientation. And then I use Autodesk Sketchbook Pro to draw on my screen itself. Very cool. So as you can see, I've got that straight on there. And in, in a short while, I'll switch over to a sharing my screen so you can see that screen directly. Very cool. So I use... I use a Lenovo X220 tablet PC. They're fantastic. Uh, I use Autodesk Sketchbook Pro as a, the main drawing program. And then for publishing, I'll use Dropbox and Twitter and WordPress for getting the sketch notes out there. Very cool. Now, the stylus I see in your hand, does that come with, I assume, with the Lenovo? Yes. In fact, it slots into a, a, a um, kind of this space for it right in the case. Okay. And uh, they've, they've put in an alarm. So if you're, I think if, if you're walking off without mm. your stylus, you actually get this little icon show up in your screen. Oh, the proximity <laughs> alarm. Hey, oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I've, uh, you can you can actually use pen and touch to interact with the screen, but because I do so many sketch notes, I've set it up to only recognize the pen. Gotcha. As you can see, even if I touch you it or use it. my palm, uh, it doesn't trigger. If I use the pen, then things happen. And so now um, Sasha has gone ahead and switched over to screen view so we can actually see her as she works and she can explain a little more of her process. So go ahead, Sasha. Okay, so you're asking about whether I tend to work zoomed out or zoom, or whether I zoom in. Right. And I really like Autodesk Sketchbook Pro because it's got a very pen-based interface, so I can mm -hmm. zoom in and scroll around uh, fairly easily. Not as easily as you can with a multi-touch display, uh, but easily enough so that I can go in here, I can write a few things more legibly, saying, you know, uh, try things out. Okay. And then I can then zoom out and see how that fits into the whole space hmm. or move things around as needed. And I assume, um, um, I think I've seen Dave Gray do this where, for instance, what you just wrote, if you felt like maybe you wanted to put it in this, if you wanted to center it under those two columns, you could easily grab it and move it over if you like, right? So that's one of the advantages, too, of that software. Absolutely, and that makes me totally spoiled when it comes to uh, working digitally. You know the challenge when sometimes speakers you know, have either too much content or too little content and you're right. scrambling for space in your sketch note. Well, when you're working on a computer, especially with a computer where it's easy to lasso uh, uh, an item and move it around, you can make space or, late, for example, if, um, hang on a second, if it turns out that people didn't give you as much content as you expected, you can move things around so it hmm. just looks like an excellent use of white space. Wonderful. Now, in the middle of that drawing, I see you've got uh, your workflow. Can you zoom that up and maybe take us through your typical sure. workflow? So I do a lot of sketch notes of books and presentations. And as I mentioned, I do most of that in Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. 
couple of things make it much easier for me to get these out very quickly. I usually work with a grid or a drawing template, and let me show you what that looks like with it. I say add image, I pick one of my templates, for example, grid and credits. And what that does is on a layer, it allows me to add a very faint grid that I can draw. Uh -huh. Sometimes I leave this grid in, sometimes I take it out, but it means that I don't have to worry about my lines wandering elsewhere. Good. So I do all of this drawing in Autodesk Sketchbook Pro with lots of layers. And then um, if I want to include any logos or pictures, I can drop that into Sketchbook directly. If I want to trace the logo, I can use ArtRage Studio Pro, which automatically picks up the colors as I'm drawing on something. Mm. So it, it's much easier to color match without having to you know, pick up the fiddly little yeah, colors and yeah. multicolored logos. And it looks like so down I, there you've yeah. got Camtasia running as well? Yes, I do. Uh, so you've, I've got, uh, so I, I sketch it out in, in Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. If I think that I'm going to want to, um, to put together a speed drawing video, I'll use Camtasia Studio to record things in the background mm -hmm. like I'm doing now. And then when I'm done with the image, I'll save it in Dropbox. This automatically synchronizes the uh, file with my phone. Mm -hmm. And then I can use my phone or my computer if I'm just happening to be sketchnoting one talk. I can use either my phone or, com or computer to post that to Twitter. So if I'm sketchnoting a conference with lots and lots of talks, I don't want to be switching back and forth between Autodesk Sketchbook Pro and Dropbox and Twitter and, and my blog and all those other things. That's why I use my phone to tweet the links immediately, hmm. and then I can save the laptop for drawing. Gotcha. So you sort of uh, you, you offload some of those tasks to other devices and then keep the devices focused for the things that they're really good at. Right. And that means I don't have to be switching back and forth between applications. So if people are saying interesting things, I can just keep drawing. Yep. I usually post a recap blog post. If it's, um, if it's just one talk, then I'll blog it right away. If it's a conference, then I'll wait until the end of the conference to post a blog post with, uh, you know, with thumbnails and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, links to the full-size images so that people can share this with other people later on. Excellent. In addition, yeah. In addition to file it, you know, posting it in my blog, I also file all my sketch notes in Evernote, so then it's much easier to search through my notes. Great. Now, tell me a little bit. Uh, I've explored Evernote, and I'm actually thinking of going back to it because of some of the new features in Five, especially. Um, do you tag your work, or does can Evernote actually scan your oh. your uh, sketch notes? Since you have really beautiful handwriting, can it scan the sketch notes and pick up words, or uh, do you have to manually e enter that meta information? This is amazing. It, it can actually, it, it understands most of what I write. And then I help it a little bit with some more keywords. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, um, you can see here how I've put most of the uh, sketch notes into the Sketch Notes by Sasha Chua notebook, which oh. I've actually shared publicly. So anyone can find this notebook and subscribe to it or search it. If I search in here, so let's say, for example, I'm looking for Visual Library, which you mentioned in your book. Uh, so Visual Library. And I say insert search. You can see here how it's looking inside the yeah. inside the image, and it's highlighting, it's highlighting where it sees those words. That is very cool. Here's my sketch note of yours. You can see here how mm -hmm. Visual Library, even if it's in all caps and inside a small box, has been found and highlighted. So in addition to being able to search the text, I also occasionally uh, fill in some more information so that I can easily find the you know the visual metaphors that I use. For example, in this uh, digital sketch noting workflow, I've also added some some words that I might not have written down or might not easily be recognized by by Evernote. So you can see here how I've got this this uh, word keyword here for magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to find all of the sketch notes where I've drawn a magnifying glass in case I feel like challenging myself to use different visual metaphors. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. That's really fascinating it's the amazing. way that's working. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I strongly recommend checking out Evernote. I've, you can set it up so that it'll import all the files in the folder. And I've set up hmm. shortcuts so that after I publish a sketch note using, uh, using Dropbox, I can just right click on the file and have that be imported into my Evernote. Wow. Now, um, I notice you've got a little spot down in the lower left, some of the caveats of using the system. What are some of those at a high level? Oh, yeah, let's, let me switch to those so we can zoom in on that one. Sure. A lot of the, t the times people get hung up on the expense. Certainly, mm -hmm. if you already have a computer, you know, buying a new tablet PC is, can, can be a significant cost. Um, I've 
because this is my main computer, I find that it's very much worth the investment. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've, I've, you know, upgraded it with lots of memory and lots of hard disk space, so I can actually use it for all the other things that I do. Um, Microsoft Windows is a the, Apple tends to not believe in um, in tablet computers that have pens in them. Mm-hmm. I don't really know why, but. Um, but if you if you want to work with a Lenovo XT20 tablet PC like I do, then it probably means getting yourself set up on Windows mm-hmm. because that's where most of the apps are, and that can take a little bit of a learning curve for people. Um, the weight of a backpack uh, of of this is a bit um, a concern as well. Uh, I can't remember what the exact weight is, but because I have the the tablet as well as an extended battery pack, which means that I can go for an entire conference without having to uh, worry about plugging into a power outlet. It does mean that I'm carrying around a fairly heavy backpack to mm. these things. Gotcha. And uh, as mentioned, battery life. Um, you know, it's you'll have if you don't get an extended battery, your battery life will be much shorter than a regular tablet. Uh, but if you do get the extended battery, which I, I consider to be well worth it, then at least you don't have to fight so much over power outlets at conferences. Interesting, interesting. And I know um, I mentioned uh, Dave Gray uses a tablet PC, and I think a couple of years ago when we did a conference, I was up in front and we got to draw on his PC, and I actually kind of liked the way the screen felt. It felt a lot like pencil on paper to me, oddly enough. Um, I don't know, I think he might have had a different brand, but it was uh, the same thing and I thought it was kind of interesting and I haven't explored yeah. that yet because you know like I've got other machines that I've already invested in so it would it would be a, an investment for me but I'm really curious about it and I think uh, if people are thinking about it it's a really interesting option that you should consider it's actually very smooth and I, I, I prefer it over drawing on paper or, or a tablet because on paper you've got, you know, sometimes it's scritchy and your lines don't go where you want, it to, want them to go. Certainly the texture is nice, but uh, I find that um, that when I'm drawing on a tablet PC, my lines look a lot more confident because they're digital. <laughs> and um, and because, um, because I'm not relying on, you know, friction and, and all of those other things for right. a tablet, it's you know it's it's a much more consistent experience for me. Wow, this is really fascinating. I, I'm, I love that you've done that. So, um, I think we're uh, we're really ex- I'm really excited to be sharing this with people because I think a lot of people do use paper. So, thank you for being on the show. And uh, what we're going to do is um, we'll include in the show notes some links to all these references so people can check you out. They can read your blog. They can look at this image more closely and see your sketch notes. And uh, we'll share that with people. So, thank you so much for coming on, Sasha. My pleasure. It's, you know, digital drawing has been the, the key thing that's, that's made it so much more fun for me. And I'd love it if more people gave it a try. Great. And maybe uh, as, a, as a way to, to end this show, can you give us some uh, just verbally uh, some places where people can find you, like Twitter and your blog and so forth? Huh, well, I can zoom in over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you so you can find me on Twitter as Sasha C. That's S A C H A C, and you can you can check out my sketch notes and other things I've posted in my blog. You don't have to remember how to spell my name for that one. You can just go to livinganawesomelife.com. So that's livinganawesomelife.com, which it is. Well, that's great, and I, I can see you're just passionate about it, and I just love talking with you today. Thank you for taking the time and. Um, I hope you get lots of interest from people that are curious and asking questions. Thank you. My pleasure. Have fun. Okay, thanks a lot. And that wraps up this episode of the Sketchnote Handbook Podcast. And that we're going to be uh, doing some more stuff like this, interviewing other people and seeing how their workflows work. So tune in for the next episodes as they come out. Thanks. Mm-hmm.